Good evening. You're watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Did Putin's cyber attack of Georgia amount to a historic first in the history of warfare? That sounds pretty ponderous, but here's what happened. For the first time in history, Putin, at least we believe it's Putin, had a cyber attack contemporaneous with a land attack. And that's never happened before. We'll find out from our guests tonight, who you meet in a moment, that cyber attacks by themselves are not so historic. But to combine it with a land attack to try to knock out a country such as Georgia is novel, I would submit. And we want to ask uh, our guests tonight, what was the effect of this cyber attack on Georgia? Did it paralyze Georgia, for example? And our guest tonight is Kim Taypal. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming by, Kim. Thanks, uh, you are a uh, cyber crime expert among the many hats that you wear, and that's why you're here tonight. And so I think we ought to start uh, right at the beginning. Um, what's your view as to whether there has been a cyber attack along with a land attack at the same time. Is this, is well, this, Jim, there's, there's no question there was a cyber attack. Uh, Georgia, like Estonia a year ago, came under significant, coordinated, uh, intensive, and repeated cyber attack during the crisis uh, over Georgia. Um, and this did occur, in this case, uh, 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 in conjunction with a land attack, as you said. The question really is, is, is Putin responsible? Uh, are the Russians behind this, or was this just a bunch of hackers uh, going after Georgia? Uh, right. as Russia so let's, let's, let's definitely talk about that. But I'm sure, if we still have our audience, everyone's wondering what the devil a Happen. cyber attack. Right. What is a cyber attack? Well, in the case of Georgia, uh, uh, the attack was no different than the attacks that we used to see here in the United States three, four years ago. Well, well, distributed. I don't know. What, what are those? The, the kinds of attacks that you would that you would hear about that would shut down websites and that, or that w where people would hack websites. I'm so it's hack hacking. It's hacking. It's hacking and it's distributed denial of service attacks, which are okay. Which now stop right. Yeah. Okay. Because when I looked at stuff to get ready for the program, I had a hard time saying cyber. We got hackers out there on an international level, and then I kept coming across this phrase, denial of service, right. which you just mentioned. What does that mean? Well, denial of service attack is when you get when you when you aggregate a number of computers and then send commands to other computers, web servers in this case, and you and you and you no different than if you're going to the website, but you do it in such uh, magnitude, so you aggregate so many computers doing it at the same time that it overwhelms the other server's ability to respond. So oh. it's basically like creating a traffic jam. Okay, so. Uh, whoever did this, I think it's Russia, but you may uh, wonder when we get to that part of the program. So whoever did it uh, finds a whole bunch of computers, and there are lots mm -hmm. of them, right? Right. And uh, he fills them with some sort of message, I guess. Is that? Well, there, there's different ways that, 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 that a dis, uh, dis denial of service attack can happen. I mean, one could aggregate a number of people with their own computers, and everybody sitting at that computer could send the com yeah. command over and over again. That's yeah. not what normally happens in these cases. What normally happens in these cases is that a command and control server organizes a botnet, what's called a botnet, which is which are previously uh, 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 hacked and controlled computers. Yeah, so he's got I a whole bunch of, he's got a computer right. farm at his disposal. He has a computer farm and at maybe his disposal. And the computers may belong to someone else. That's correct. They yeah, okay. belong to you, and you may not know. You might not even know it. Right. Okay, right. so he hits the button. Right. Somebody hit the button and sent a message, apparently, as I understand it, to the uh, Georgia State website. Does that sound right? Well, I, I where think did all these let's, let, let, let's, let's backtrack a second. I, Georgian websites had come under attack. Georgian government websites, the president's website, the, parla the official parliament website, the Department of Defense, the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs, had come under attack for several weeks before the physical attack. Um, the day or two before the physical attack, uh, those servers were actually overwhelmed and brought down with a distributed denial of service attack and hacking, where, where people took over websites and replaced the official Georgian content with, for instance, uh, pro-Russian propaganda. Uh, okay, let's just okay. uh, uh, think about that in terms everyone can understand. Right. So that if you're, if you live in Georgia and right. you want to go to the government uh, website, website right. to go to the website, and you're you go wrong. on, you can't get on. You can't get on. Correct. Yeah. You can't get on, or you go on and you see other content that that someone else has put there. Pro, -pro as I said, pro-Russian propaganda. And in the case of the uh, Georgian president's website, right. they replaced it with uh, with pictures that equated him with Hitler. Now, uh, I ask myself, so what? Why well, that's really. Well, why is that? Why is that? I mean, did that? 
have any impact on the Georgia? Well, you know, it, what it does is it denies the ability, it denies the, the Georgian government and the uh, Georgian authorities the, the uh, ability to use those servers to put out information during the crisis, both put out information to their own people oh, and to the I world see. in general. I see. So it's really that. But, 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 the, but, but, the, but the, the uh, thought behind your question is really the important one. I mean, so what in the sense in the context of warfare? Um, those attacks, which started the way I described them, then spread to other sectors of the, of the Georgian uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, there were attacks right. against the Bank of Georgia, uh, the, the National oh, Bank, there were attacks against uh, and, the Bank and against of Georgia? some of the media outlets. Um, and it might be uh, instructive here to look back at the attacks in Estonia. Yeah, I was about to say, okay. because Estonia, the same thing uh, generically happened to Estonia, right. but it was just limited to the banks, wasn't it? Well, no, Estonia, they also, they also attacked uh, the government websites. The Estonian situation, which was about, uh, uh, was in April of uh, 2007, um, uh, came about you know, over political conflict with, with Russia, essentially, um, where the, the Estonian government had decided to move a statue uh, uh, out of the capital uh, or to, to a lesser uh, 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 place. And uh, that created a problem with the, with the uh, ethnic Russians within Estonia and with Russia itself. Um, and what happened is Estonia came under a repeated attack for about three weeks that actually shut down the country. And the attack there, again, was distributed denial of service attacks and, and some minor hacking. Um, and, but in that case, we're, they were able to overwhelm the banking system uh, as well as, as so, some uh, other things. So they were able to shut down a whole, the whole banking system. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing, the difference between Estonia and Georgia, and I know, man, but excuse me for saying sure. so, but the uh, Estonia, for some reason, is one of the few countries that's entirely on the uh, this, on the net, right? This, 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 this yeah. is about uh, what I was about to say. Uh, if you compare the Estonia attack in Georgia. Um, the Georgian attack was successful in bringing down these websites, but was not very successful in shutting down the Georgian government. Um, in Estonia, it was actually very successful, yeah. even without the parallel physical attack. And the difference is that Estonia, in Estonia, 97% of the population does online banking. Uh, in Estonia, people vote online. In Estonia, they vote online. Yes, they vote online. Not Estonia? the entire population, but they had a, they they do allow knew, online voting. That. And they had they the 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 consequences that Estonia was very uh, uh, internet uh, dependent. And therefore, the attacks actually uh, in interfered with the ability to people to do things. I mean, they but shut down the banking in Georgia, system. But in, in Georgia, the impact wasn't as great. But Georgia doesn't have much of its banking system online. No. Uh, it's no, nowhere near as much as Estonia, right. um, which raises some interesting questions about, for instance, the United States economy, which is much more dependent on the well, Internet. Well, I was going to ask you about the United right. States. Right. Now, isn't it, isn't it true that um, all governments are cy cyber attacking all governments all yes. the time? Yes. They are. Yes. So we're um, being we're being we're under attack as we speak. Yes. Um, we, where, where would that attack likely. be, for example? Well, maybe our me, viewers would want to know, so they so, so they, they could, could leave. Else. <laughs> yeah. Um, the it might be instructive here to go back and talk about Georgia for a second. I mean, let's talk about attacks and, and let's yeah, okay, uh, let's start to uh, say. Okay, so we had these distributed denial of service attacks, and we had right. some minor hacking would put these propaganda. The question of whether that's actually cyber war or not is an interesting question. Um, in the context of it certainly seems to me. It well, is. In, it, uh, but but is it that or is is it more a cyber riot? Is it more? Is it more uh, a, a nuisance? But here's the thing. Um, the whole, we're system, whole banking system goes down. Well, well, I'm sorry to interrupt. You. I, no, trying no, no, get, that's, that's trying to get your point out. Go no. ahead. Um, the the. Um, uh, if, if you look at government hacking, uh, there's a lot of government hacking going on. The, the, I mean, there's been accusations that the Chinese government is hacking most of the Western uh, uh, governments. Well, didn't the Chinese, in, Chinese, in fact, get through to the United States? Well, they States? did. They, did. Yeah. The question, they hacked and won. The, the question, the, yeah. But, but you have to separate these kinds of attacks, like the distributed denial of service right. attacks, which we've seen from China and from Russia in many, many right. uh, political crises in the past. I mean, when, when our uh, plane was forced down, uh, uh, the spy plane was forced down, when we bombed the, uh, by accident, bombed the um, Chinese embassy, uh, 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 there was, in, there was uh, a- In Yugoslavia. In Yugoslavia. Yeah. There, was a, there was a brief uh, um, uh, uh, outburst of hacker versus hacker kind of fighting going on between Chinese hackers and U.S. hackers. We've seen this between the Palestinians and the Israelis. We've seen it in the Russian context, not just with Estonia, but a couple of months ago, um, attacks on Lithuania. And and the question is, are those sort of nationalistic hackers that in the context of a political conflict join in the fight and essentially feel like they can be warriors, or is it the government? And so let's come back around to the thing. The United States government s systems are under attack all the time, and they are under attack and specifically. They're not, but they're not, they're not under attack just by, by uh, well, but you. Well, but this is the difference. Use. But this is the difference. The kinds of attack are more like espionage attacks. I mean, the, 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 
when, when governments no, attack, they want to be inside the systems. They want to use that. They want to exploit the systems. They don't want to block them. Um, when they do want to do cyber warfare, and again, the United States right now is going through a debate about developing more offensive cyber cap cap capacity in addition to cyber defense, um, the kinds of cyber uh, uh, offense that we talk about in the context of militaries and, and intelligence agencies are really the kinds of uh, uh, attacks against control systems, bringing okay, well, down the electrical grid, bringing down the air defense system, yeah, things like that, okay, not the, blocking the, the president's website. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, terrific, because I just wanted to get okay. into that point, because right. Over here, there's this really serious stuff right. of getting into systems and taking right. down, the, let's say, right. the Boulder Dam, as an example. It's too, it's too old, maybe not computerized, but it's a good example. Right. Then we have, uh, well, we have intelligence, trying to get intelligence. Exploiting in other words, you get systems, in somebody's right. computer, you find out what they're trying to do. And then we have information um, discombobulation. <laughs> can, we, can we call it that? <laughs> and in, in, in Georgia, we had the information systems were... Uh, 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 screwed up. So, uh, pick your poison. You got three three things right. to talk about. I think they're different. Well, I think they are different. And and you know you can. I mean, again, the, the, there is no evidence that the Russian government was behind the hackings in Estonia. What and, do you think? And, well, I, I actually don't. Th I, well, let, let's. Were they were they encouraging of it or were they tolerant of it? That may be. But was it the military or the intelligence services uh, attacking Georgian systems? I don't think so. Um, look, I mean, it's interesting to go well, back. Well, how about to Estonia? Well, I think in Estonia it's the same thing. I mean, if you, you look don't at think Estonia, the Russians did it? No. Well, I think Russians did it, but I don't think the Russian you don't, government. And did the it. government didn't know anything about it. Uh, I didn't uh, say they didn't know anything uh, about it. The but government I, didn't encourage I, it? I, what I said very specifically was that I don't think the military and the intelligence agencies were doing it. We're not organs of the, of the Russian government that were behind the attacks. Whether they encouraged it or allowed it to go on and didn't shut it down is a different issue. Um, I think you see in the Estonian case, even though Estonia, again, like Georgia, blamed the Russian government immediately, once the crisis was over, they actually asked the Russian government to help them find the hackers who had done it. So we were more in the cyber crime context than the cyber war context. Um, if you look at these attacks themselves, uh, both which are these? Because we well, uh, got three both, kinds. Yes, we got both, three kinds. Well, three no, kinds no. We got if you look countries. specifically in the in the kinds of attacks that we're talking about with Estonia and Georgia, and we look at the distributed denial of service attacks and the and the sort of the minor hacking that went along with that, um, one can actually trace where these were where these originated and uh, and which command and control servers were ordering uh, botnet attacks. And if you look at what happened. Uh, I think that the researchers who, who have looked at it saw that first it was individuals uh, 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 attempting to do various things, and then it was th they would talk about it on the blogs. More people joined in, then botnets joined in, and it got bigger and bigger and more organized. But it was a very organized. How does a botnet join in? Well, I think yeah, the, the way, you described, the way you described this before, there were a whole farm, or I described right. it, whole farm of computers sure. that have been taken over by right. and they're using an entity, right. and then they all. Uh, uh, send disinformation to a government uh, website. But uh, can you do that? Well, uh, can you organize a botnet yourself? Well, no, but interestingly enough, I mean, again, let's, 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 let's talk both in Estonia. I mean, in, uh, this is a, in both the Estonian case and the Georgian case. I mean, one of the reasons that people came to the conclusion that the Russians were behind it, for instance, is that. Uh, uh, some of the servers that were used for command and control were servers that are known to be controlled, or at least were known to be controlled at the time, by the Russian Business Network. The Russian Business Network is a criminal organization. It's essentially a criminal ISP, an internet service provider, that provides internet services to criminals. Um, and it's run out of St. Petersburg, and, and uh, uh, there are various uh, uh, rumored uh, 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 stories about its origin and whether KGB, ex-KGB people were involved or whether the FSB has allowed it to, ha to, to, to continue because the, it, it works to their advantage and the government uh, the, uh, uh, supports government interests. But it is a criminal organization. I, if you were a cyber criminal and wanted to spam people or to yeah. or do a den den denial of service attack, you can actually hire their network. You can hire their botnets online and then you can then command those well, botnets well, to do attacks. What's in it for, I suppose you're such a person, right. what's in it for you to uh, well, this is uh, this is the question. Up, I mean, screw up uh, Georgia's information system. Well, this is you know I, again this is this is this is part of the circumstantial evidence that at least people believe because of the size of the attack that oh my you know it must be the Russian government behind this because nobody else would do it. But it's really not true. I mean I think I if you look at sort of the self-organizing uh, social networking stuff that goes on in the internet today, you see that 
uh, uh, these kinds of flash mobs, if you will, smash, uh, flash cyber mobs, uh, can, be, can be organized very quickly around a particular event. If something happens in politics in the United States, for instance, so you watch the blogosphere, I mean, it's sort of acute, you know, everybody gets interested in that. And if you look online, I mean, there, uh, one of the, uh, Salon.com, uh, one of the writers from Salon actually went, uh, joined the Russian cyber warriors. He went on one of the websites, and one of the things that was going on at the same time is they were publishing lists of targets to attack in Georgia. And they were also putting up tools that you could download to your computer. Uh, a funny thing, one of the tools actually, when you downloaded it, came with a terms of service, a license that you would normally click on just like you would do anything else. And it said, by clicking here, you agree that your computer becomes a weapon to use against the Georgian websites. Um, so one of the salon writers, as I said, actually joined as a cyber warrior to see what it was like. And I think, again, you can see that a lot of this uh, 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 activity is sort of just volunteers joining okay, in. Okay, now, now if it's clear, I mean, your opinion may not be, is not necessarily shared by anybody, but in any event, well, uh, I think I think everybody. most of the people. I, I, I think most of the people. Everybody. I think most of the people who understand what's going on right, have watched is, this. But it's, we know it's, that it's the mainstream media. It's the we mainstream that. media that's we using that. cyber war. We know and, that's not and, everybody, uh, but right. uh, it's clear, as far as I can see, that everyone agrees that China. Uh, Got into our intelligence system. That's correct. You would, I, I you think, would agree I think with that. I, I think okay. that there. I think that there. Are, I think it's very clear to say, uh, separate from the Georgian Estonian yeah. incident, that most of the major governments in the world, including a lot of our friends, not just the Chinese and the Russians, um, are constantly hacking, trying to get into not just government systems, but you'll see that most of the uh, government-sponsored hacking or a lot of the government-sponsored hacking, is aimed at industrial espionage. Uh, industrial stealing, age, espionage? Uh, industrial espionage. Stealing secrets. Uh, stealing biotechnology. Stealing drugs. Stealing uh, Why wouldn't designs they just want to know what we're thinking? Why wouldn't they want to get into the CIA uh, major uh, database? Um, uh, to see how it's being used and well, see, I th what, I think, and I think see what views right. we have of them and, or whatever on top. Sure, I, I think at some level there's there is some of that they going must on. Be, they but must be true. Everyone must be trying to do that to sure. everyone else. Sure, I, I think at, at some level all the intelligence services are doing that to try to find out uh, information right, that will give a them a decision advantage. But, what, but one thing is very important to remember. I mean, the future of conflict is more about economic conflict and, and, and succeeding uh, uh, in, in the private sector as well. And, and government efforts in this specific area, in cyber, well, in, in cyber now. Are, are to are to are to empower. Listen, this is no different than in the old days when when uh, various intelligence agencies would try to steal, uh, you know, or do Xerox the information briefcases when American businessmen went went abroad. All right, but uh, but you're a cyber crime lawyer. Yeah. Is that uh, legal? <laughs> is that, no. Well, it's it, it is or it isn't. I mean, you know. Well, well, well of course, that's why well, I asked the question. Uh, <laughs> no, but what's the yeah. answer to well, the question? Well, but but you know, I even in this country, I mean, the way the law is, the way the the, the law has developed, uh, uh, customs and border uh, at, the, at the borders, uh, DHS can essentially. What's DHS? Uh, Department of Homeland Security, yeah. uh, who controls the the, the border uh, 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 the borders. Um, they actually have authority to seize your laptop, and if they want, make copies of your hard drive and stuff. Now, we do that ostensibly as a national security thing, and we don't grab a lot of, right. uh, 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 of, of uh, laptops. But if you travel to China, for instance, before the Olympics, uh, a number of uh, sort of CEO organizations put out bulletins, which were informed by, I think, the intelligence agencies, um, telling people specifically not to bring laptops to China that contain trade secrets. Because in, in going into China, in several cases, there have been uh, occurrences where laptops have either been that infected. Me the, the, Depart the, the Secretary of Commerce's laptop was infected by the Chinese when he traveled in China. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. It's a broad. Uh, I hate to use this word, social policy, but as a, mm -hmm. as a general, is it a generally acceptable uh, practice for a nation to engage in cyber warfare to find out, A, the economic secrets, which you mm -hmm. concede, uh, B, I would have thought, intelligence. I don't know how, if you're getting economic secrets, you're not trying to get general intelligence. Well, you are. I, is I, that I a generally it. accepted practice for nations? I, I think that, that uh, I think it's a practice that exists, and I think it's a practice that has been tolerated in the context of diplomacy and law 
for an international law for a long time. The, my point is really that that is separate from cyber warfare and from warfare generally. Again, we don't consider spies as being an attack. Yeah, I mean, but if we the, find the world the world is the world has changed. So the world is changing. So this is a big issue. Why is this a form of why is this a form of warfare? This is absolutely an issue. This is an issue that's being dealt with at the highest levels of the U.S. government as well as other governments to develop policy on how we need to manage this. The question is, if someone hacks your systems, is that an act of war? And and well, what do you ask, do in, in let me, response to that? Let me ask that? you a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. a hypothetical. Suppose that one were to conclude that Iran, despite all the time it's taken, right. uh, despite all the capability it seems to have, right. nonetheless cannot make an atomic bomb because we are cyber attacking Iran and they can't get their act together because every time they do, we're into their systems. Right. Now, is that an act of war? That's a question that hasn't been decided in international law. I, that, that's a question that's being debated at the UN, being debated at the highest levels of the Russian government, being debated at the highest levels of the US government. There's a, there is an effort right now to, to address that very issue. What do you, th um, do you think, uh, as we uh, think strategically on this mm -hmm. program, that uh, that kind of, um, what do we say? I want to use the word warfare, but uh, activity. Right. Uh, activity is where the world is going rather than uh, troops going across borders. Of course, well, Georgia, think, they think, went across right. the border. I, I think, I think you're going to see these kinds of attacks uh, in two kinds of circumstances. You're going to see them as an extent. Look, the old saw, uh, uh, war is politics uh, by other means, or, you know, the extension of it. If you put cyber there, it's just another tool in that, in that progression. And I think you will see cyber attacks somewhere between regular politics and diplomacy and absolute warfare. Uh, the question is where does that fall in various legal structures and what, what are the consequences of that? For instance, un if you're under cyber attack, can you strike back kinetically? Well, uh, um, here's what I'm going to tell you. That sure. no international body is going to agree that you can't use cyber techniques to get information about your opponents. It's just not going to happen. No, that, because, I, I think that's because correct. Because if that, if all right. intelligence right. is in the computer, right. and we don't have people, you know, on the sidewalks, you know, getting right. information, this is a substitute for sure. that. No, no nation is. I gonna, think that's correct. I mean, no I nation is going to uh, going to agree to that. Right. But they, nations might agree. Right. This is one of three categories. Right. The other category we talked about was using. Um, your computer attacking ability to bring down the Boulder, right. Boulder right. Dam. Now, everyone would agree that that, uh, that all nations agree you can't do that. Well, I, th I think that's right, and I think where we end up. I mean, this is this is what I've been arguing for for quite a, for quite a while now um, in these are in, in these discussions. Um, I think we will end up in, in, in a place where this sort of ongoing regular hacking to get information, if you will, will be treated like espionage traditionally was, yes. through diplomacy, through politics, through economic sanctions, whatever you want to do, and that we will make a distinction between that and breaking things. And once you start breaking things, okay, then so the no, question let's is... Let's go back. Let's do that. I'm always interrupting. Go ahead. No, the no, that's fine. Go ahead. But on the breaking things, it actually becomes a, an interesting question also. Are you breaking things that are just information appliances, like if you're breaking a website, yeah, yeah. Or are you breaking things that control real yeah, world yeah, things yeah, like right, the Boulder right. Dam? Okay, I think so there's some very interesting okay, so problems. So what do we do? Now let's go back to Georgia right. because Georgia, you could say, is none of the above. Right. In other words, Georgia is just bringing down websites, right. plain old websites. Everyone can understand. Right. No, well, how does that? You think that will be tolerated? Well, I, you know, it's an interesting question. I mean, it, you know, one can make an argument about why that would be a useful uh, uh, thing to do in the c context of, of physical assault, for instance. You, I mean, you 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 you, con you sow confusion in the enemy's civilian population, you uh, uh, interfere with their ability to communicate with their population and stuff. So you can see how it is a... That's old-fashioned warfare. Well, it is. So it is. But I, in a new, here's in my a, prediction. Right, right. That's going to be allowed. Right. You're not going to bring that down the Boulder, Boulder Dam, but you're going to be able to do. Well, I think. But let me let me ask. Well, let me just. Wait, 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 and I want to talk about United States okay. defenses. Yes. Well, let's let's move to defenses. But let's yeah. talk one thing on this d distributed denial of service attack. Remember, Georgia. Uh, well, Estonia was very, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the attacks on Georgia, was, uh, Estonia were successful because Estonia was so dependent on the internet. Right. But they were also had very few con uh, 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 um, connections to the outside world. Uh, Georgia also had very few connections to the outside world. I mean, their, most of their connections ran through Turkey and, and Russia. Um, one of the things that we're starting to learn, the l one of the lessons to learn from this is, is those countries which are essentially cyber landlocked, if you will, um, are easy to attack. The United States, you know, 
know, look, when no, I said... Talk about the United States. Okay. When I said uh, earlier... John, do we have any good defenses? Against distributed denial of service attack? Yes. Uh, no, against cyber warfare. Now, I want to... I've, well, okay. I've got something here, but I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it. Yes. That um, uh, members of Congress uh -huh. have come to the conclusion that we have no adequate defenses against cyber attack, yeah. and that homeland security is out to lunch on this. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I think it's a more complex. It's, it's, it's more complex than yes or no answer. Uh, the the I, I think the interesting thing actually this morning's headline from from uh, uh, government executive was uh, the first the first headline was uh, DHS to be uh, the lead on Department cyber security. security. Department of Homeland Security to be lead on on, on uh, cyber security, and then the next literally the next headline I brought you the the, the thing. Is um, uh, panel suggests that DHS should not lead, you know, cannot cannot possibly uh, lead cybersecurity. Well, what is wrong? I'm but scared the now. Is, I'm worried uh, about the, the our problem is when we say cybersecurity cyber again, it's a very complex thing. I mean, DHS as the coordinating uh, entity for cybersecurity about protecting government systems may make sense. Uh, can 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 uh, DHS itself protect the entire nation? Well, that's a, that's different, a different question. question. But well, but that's that's yeah. But but uh, but I just uh, uh, let's leave out the details for a moment. I'm sitting here, right. I'm thinking about 9-11 and the fact right. that we weren't adequately protected right. from an intelligence point of view. In other words, we didn't find right. out about it. Right. Then I pick up the paper, you picked it up, I picked it up before you picked it up, and it, uh, both papers say the same thing. Right. That we're not adequately protected. How do we get our protection? Well, I think how this do is we, how do we, because yeah. the question we haven't talked about is how do you defend against right. these rather, rather than uh, regardless of whether right. it's adequate or not, how right. do you defend against right. these attacks? Well, I, I, two things. Let's, I mean, let's quickly sidetrack onto the, quick, uh, okay. on the on the technical side. We're not. We're, we're, we we don't need to worry about distributed denial of service attacks. The, the answer to distributed st distributed denial of service attacks is more bandwidth. Uh, if if the way Georgia coped with this attack was they moved all their websites to, to Google because Google had such capacity that the, okay. that the attacks couldn't overwhelm. Okay, so that so that's not the thing. Okay, but on, so on let me cyber just, itself and and the point that you make about whether we're prepared let's say or not. Let's say Boulder Dam. Okay. Okay. The, the point that you make about cybersecurity is, is a valid point. Uh, the criticism of DHS is not that they're incapable or incompetent, necessarily. It's that they don't have the ability not to coordinate that it, it's that they don't have the ability to coordinate other agencies. They don't have the authority to coordinate other agencies. And the argument really is whether all of this doesn't need to be, whether we don't need a strategy, a cyber strategy yeah, well, okay. at the White House level. Okay, okay. I uh, understand that, but I want to get ask, uh, get you to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Can you defend against these attacks? Yes uh, or no? Defense is an interesting question. Uh, you can't stop the attacks. I think resilience. You can't. You can't stop bringing down the website, or they would have stopped bringing down the website. Well, and right? I think we can do. We can stop that. I mean, we know how to. Okay. We know how to protect against distributed so denial of service. So we're running attacks. out of running out of okay. time. Uh, how how much uh, in jeopardy are we? Well, we're, we're at a lot of jeopardy because there's lots of holes in the system. We're moving along and trying to figure out how to, how to block okay. those. But holes. let me ask you the key question mm -hmm. of this program: Did the attacks on Estonia, cyber attacks, paralyze Estonia, and why not? Estonia? Yes. I don't mean Estonia, I yeah, mean uh, Georgia. Georgia. Um, I think they, they didn't really paralyze Georgia. Uh, again, they were fairly amateurish attacks, right. and they were aimed okay. at websites. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't paralyze. But there are attacks down there that could paralyze There are absolutely attacks that can have paralyzed everything. Hey, time. Kim, thanks, thanks for coming by. Thanks, Jim. And thank you for coming by, and come by next week and learn more about the digital age. For the digital age, I am. James Goodale, good night, and have a good week.